Welcome back to our podcast. It's been a while. Yay. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of FU Talk. Do you know why there are no podcast? Because somebody has been traveling. No, I'm always on podcast. Like it's always not in the mood. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, today got no drink because that uh, we already have a uh, lots of alcohol. So uh, we just want to like relax in uh, in the bathtub. Yeah, we just came out from happy hour. Mm. So um, we had like um. Some drinks already, so I think it's okay. Yeah, so just like soak up from this uh, after alcohol. It's actually a bad idea. You are not supposed to soak in the hot tub after alcohol. Mm, but in Japan, they drink sake at onsen. <laughs> That's what we did. So today our topic is going to talk about gay cruise. Uh, in particular, the... Cruise that is organized by Atlantis. Atlantis. Which I missed for... Twice. Yeah, because I couldn't get beef. Why do I hear the water yeah. running? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what... Is that... Oh. No? I think... Oh, I think I just... We just put too much water and then it's just like... The excess water just flown down. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Because that there's no... Uh, the drainage is uh, empty here. Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, because so... Like Sean is the one that had not been to the gay cruise, I will let him to ask me all the questions that <laughs> what had experiences in the gay cruise. Okay, so um, a cruise is a cruise, la, but then what no, makes it special? No, it's a gay cruise. cruise. It's not a cruise, it's a gay cruise. A, okay, so, um, yeah, so I. It's not really a gay cruise. Hey, okay, what do you mean? But it's an all. I would say it's an all inclusive kind of cruise because alcohol is not included. No, I mean in terms of gender equality. Ah, I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> alcohol, Sorry. alcohol, everything also. It's alcohol. very important, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, apparently, based on what he shared, um, besides. Homosexuals, there were other like um, sexual orientation, people with other sexual orientation on board. It and does. Even um, people who brought along their parents. It does. What I, it was, does. I, was, I was so shocked that uh, when I see a old, an old man with a walking stick, and I'm like, mm, it doesn't look like a gay man. And then, like, there's like, another guy that pushed him out. And then I said, oh, wow. It's like, is that the. Uh, Big gap, uh, love. I said, like, "Oh, hi, Jim. Ah, uh, that's my father." Like, oh, okay. Sorry. Luckily, I did not say anything yet. So you can see that, um, in terms of the overall uh acceptance level. Yeah, even they bring their mother. Some, high. some. Uh, that I think two or three, they actually bring their mother on board. And then I was like, wondering why there is this old lady at the poolside and then like she looks happy and and I like there's another uh, fellow cruise ship people that took their mums on a gay cruise. Mm. So it's actually quite interesting Mm. because um, every, for every leg of the journey, um, there is like, a uh, cruise that is operated by different operators, yes, right? Yes, it is. So, so it is like uh, Royal Caribbean is the most popular one, mm. Virgin, mm. and then uh, Inf- Infinity or something. Or there are quite a lot of the different cruises. So it really depends on like which the depends on the destination as well as Correct. the cruise. So operator. so a lot of people that make a lot of complaint, uh about Atlantis, I will have to raise a concern to say that actually there's a lot of things that Atlantis don't really work out with that. Atlantis is just like a, an agent to bring up, to book the entire ship and to bring up all the LGBT people into the ship. So uh, there are things that Atlantis might not doing well for us. Uh, that, but there are lots of things It's actually organized by the cruise ship company mm. It's just like a, a port uh, My recent trips in Aten, uh, The port is horrible 
there's no shelter. It's very hot. It's only two immigration officer will be in that uh uh Aten and then to clear like two thousand and five hundred uh, uh passengers, which is is quite a nightmare. Um, but Atlantis and Virgin is actually that work out to build up the tentage, as what I know. Uh, if if you were going to the cruise without Atlantis. Most of the people will not have any tentage to check in at this uh Aten port. Mm. It was really hot during the summer. The hot in Asia and in Europe is a different thing. Although the same temperature, the heat in uh Europe is unbearable. Okay, yeah. so um, a lot of things are actually operator dependent, la, and yes. it's also other situational factors like um. The port of call where you are boarding the cruise cruise liner. From. Yeah, like the food. There are people complaining that the food is really bad, but uh, Atlantis had no right to tell those cruise company to cook what uh perfect for us. Yeah. So it, it's just like the cruise ship actually cooked the basic thing for regular cruises. So people will complain that I don't like this, I don't like that, it's just not healthy, it's not tasty, it's blah 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 blah. As what I know is that actually uh a lot of people blame everything to Atlantis because that uh they think they booked through Atlantis but it is like you have to know that actually Atlantis is the one to organize that like, those party and those like uh LGBT shows. Actually, you need to understand. Are you tired? I need to understand that Atlantis is just an organizer. Yes, it is. But, it is. Um, they don't have the hardware, so they need to rely on cruise liner operators to bring, to complete the whole entire mm. Atlantis experience. It is. And I think as much as they want to, um make it very enjoyable and a wonderful experience for everybody but um, they really depend on the operator per se to kind of actualize the experience for everybody mm. so because, like, some of the show it's just a very boring aerobatic show in the cruise but Atlantis they actually bring out a lot of the gay comedian <laughs> uh, drag shows and uh, singing thing popular yeah. gay singer to perform so that what, I, I, which I show Sean like Sean is quite impressed with some of the videos so what Jim is trying to say is that they can I mean Atlantis um, in general can um, try as best as they can to mm. kind of enhance the whole cruise experience, experience. But the hardware itself is still very much dependent on the cruise operators. Yeah. And and uh, sadly that I only been to Atlantis Gay Cruise. There are a lots of different kinds of gay cruise around the world. Uh, I only been to gay, uh, Atlantis, which I feel comfortable. Mm. Uh, I will try to explore more different gay cruise and then I will share with you all again if Sean had not joined me on the other gay cruise. <laughs> but I make my promise to Sean and Sean will try his best to get uh, the 2025 uh, Hong Kong to Singapore gay cruise. Yeah, to uh, uh, it's also Atlantis. Uh, we will see that uh, maybe that after Sean first Virgin Gay Cruise, he will make another podcast to share his experiences. Well, I must say that I haven't been to any cruise ever. <laughs> oh, like yes. beach. oh, he also missed out another cruise. Yeah, that- I, I was trying to say I haven't been to any cruise, any cruise, be it normal cruise or just a. Uh, Team party kind of cruise. Yeah. Because uh, actually the very uh, regular cruise that I booked for Sean, he how did you miss out that? Uh? What happened was it? Because of COVID. Is it because but I, I, I went on the cruise because but you, of you, you could not make COVID. it. COVID. I see. Con- oh COVID. Con- oh yes. Contact yes. tracing. Yes. So we call it one virus. So uh yeah, so and now like Sean had never been to any cruises, but I have the one that keeps showing he, him. He kept telling me it's very boring, nothing to do. Uh, but then he tell me that oh, so after, straight after, cruise after. is very boring. 
No, but even, cruise? even straight cruises, he got one night stands as well. <laughs> and that guy texted Sean about the one night stand. He said, oh, that guy, I will blacklist him. If you know you're the person that to tell Sean this story, you are such a bitch. Yeah. So... Uh, Any question you would like to ask, like you have not asked me be- about the gay cruise? Because like, there are quite a lot of the people, they have not been to any gay cruise that... Uh, this podcast is the one that I'm going to let Sean Shouldn't they ask. be asking the question? <laughs> but I mean that yes, uh, Sean actually I share a lot with Sean, but there might be some question that as a person he never been to any cruise, uh he might need to know. So I know that before the cruise set sail or as it set setting sail, then there needs to be like an emergency evacuation drill practice. Yes, yes. So is that very troublesome? Um, I've been to five cruises. Four of the cruises I, I boarded on time. But my last cruise in Aten to Barcelona, I was very late to board the, cru- uh, the ship. So I missed up the drill evacuation practice. And, and now they just like, oh, okay, you just... Shouldn't they ensure that everybody go through the whole evacuation drill practice? I'm not sure about that, but uh, I think some of the cruise line they just can't do anything. But there will be a card to tell you that mm. where you should go because uh, at the the back of the door, the floor plan, it actually shows very clear where is a place to go for the evacuation meeting point for every different category or different rooms. Okay. So, but uh, best thing that if you go early, you have to familiar familiarize that uh where is the direction because that in a cruise, I think even though that a lot of people been to the cruise many times, uh when you're in the enclosed area, you will get lost where is the left and right to the right person place. So for every time I go to the cruise, I will. Uh, mess up that should I go to the left to the right to the pool to the restaurant to the the cafe to to whatever places I always make a lot of detour yeah okay. it, you will you will have the same experience when you, you go to the cruise it's very confusing that because that, uh, most of the cruise is a very bad thing that they will never show where is the staircase the nearest staircase is so you just like, go to and then and now you make a big detour and then at some floor you actually can't go to those uh, facility that you wanted to go. Mm, yeah. Okay. And and uh, if I were you, I would strongly recommend you when you book a cruise choose the highest floor which is near to the swimming pool. That is the uh, most fun part because that uh, when near the swimming pool is also near to the big buffet area that you can get the food easier and faster you so for me I never use a leaf and I except I was drunk then I'll use a leaf most of the time I'll just use a staircase and when you're on a cruise like, uh, when I'm on a cruise my step count and my staircase count is really really high yeah okay talking about food and beverage because a cruise ship has got so many people on board right mm-hmm. So how is the breakfast situation like? I imagine that it will be very messy, crowded, and then there's like a lot of people <laughs> queuing up just to go for breakfast. For my experience, street cruise or a regular cruise is uh, a nightmare. Mm-hmm. But uh, gay cruise, most of the gay, they party too late. So a <laughs> lot of gay, they skip the breakfast. <laughs> and if you book a sweet room usually you have a special area for the breakfast so you will go to that area for your breakfast mm. uh, for regular cruises you will have either the buffet area or you can go to the a la carte area to have the the, the breakfast so it's two places for you to have the breakfast uh, it usually end around like 11 30 or 11 so not a big problem but if you miss out the breakfast uh Food in the cruise is usually about 24 hours. There will be a small corner for like light by all this thing. So uh, if you miss out your breakfast, you can still go somewhere to grab some like fries, nuggets, uh, pizza, depends on the cruise company. Then you can get those food to keep yourself full. Okay. So yeah. in general, um, 
if you are not picky about food, that means you won't go hungry. Never. Ah. Uh, okay. A lot of people they put on weight on a cruise, a uh, gay or regular cruise, because like the food is a lot. They have a lot of buffet spreads like a uh, salad, noodle station, mm. pasta, pizza, all kinds of things. So you will never really go hungry at all. So, uh, but one thing about the regular cruise that you can pay for the free flow alcohol, you can just get alcohol anytime that you want. Like we've been to Club Med, uh, alcohol anytime. But uh, most of the gay cruise, I never heard from uh, any gay cruise. They provide free flow alcohol package, which is that we know that gay drink a lot. Okay. Then how about um, like internet connection? Okay, I only been to two gay cruise and three regular cruise. Mm-hmm. Regular cruises, they usually uh, you have to pay for the internet, is which is cost quite a lot. Mm-hmm. But I'm quite lucky that I, uh, my last cruise, uh, Virgin, they offer free internet. Oh, slower speed, but it's good enough for you to reply email, mm-hmm. uh, chat and publish a post on your uh, social media. Uh, upload video will take slightly longer time. Mm-hmm. So uh, no worry about the internet speed because that new, as long as you go to the new cruise uh, ship, they actually have a better satellite Wi-Fi thing. So they are better. The oldest cruise it go, it will be slower and more expensive. Yeah, so choose a newer ship will be help a lot. Okay, so... So actually, this um, goes back to the point where actually the organizer do not really have a lot of control over the mm-hmm. hardware yeah. of the particular cruise company which they engage. La, because mm. it also depends on where they are traveling to and how convenient it is for the mm-hmm. cruise operator to make available their cruise Correct. ship. For that particular event. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just like uh, Atlantis, every cruise of Atlantis, they will be asked the president session. So you president actually session. can, president, they call it president, uh, Rich, the owner of Atlantis, they call it president. Okay. Yeah, so they have cruise director, president, mm-hmm. Yali Yala. So Atlantis, the Rich Campbell, he will be actually answer you. Uh, there will be a time schedule that I think on a C day, uh, there's nothing to do. You can just go to the area, ask him any question. He is a brilliant guy that will tell you that, uh, answer you the question almost immediately. That's like a very good impression of him because uh, he will always say that, don't uh, complain to me after you enter the shift and write me a wrong email, long, long, long email that like, this is not good, that is not good. Happen to you uh, on the ship, just look for him, text him, uh, look for any Atlantis cruise, tell them that your issue and then he will solve the problem for you as he can if he is in his, within his power. So that's a very cool, uh, cool thing. And almost every first night of the gay cruise, there will be a farewell party or de- uh, not departure party we call it. Then uh, the first night, the Atlantis crews will, uh, the, the president will introduce you all the Atlantis uh, crews member and then tell everyone all this thing will share with you that what you should know, what you should not do. Uh, there is a very cool thing about that one couple they was sent into the prison during the cruise. Prison? Yes. Because uh, they were having sex on the balcony which is facing a school. And then, uh, then they got uh, <laughs> arrested uh, on the port. So, uh, they, so uh, during the first night, they will brief you that what you should do or what you should not do. Do you have any questions? You just ask all these things. Because uh, there are lots of people think that, oh, this gay cruise, you should do everything that you want. But yes, uh, but you have to do it in a very... How to you say still a need proper to way. respect the boundaries. Correct, you correct. Not just because you're on board the, the gay ship, cruise, and yeah. then you can just do whatever you want. Because that that those uh stuff in the gay cruise, the ship, they are belong to like maybe Disney, Royal Caribbean, all yeah, these things. The cruise operator, so they, the, those speak. stuff they are straight. They are no, they most of them they are straight. straight. They will be briefed by the company. Say that okay, we are going to operate this uh charter ship to be a gay cruise so that mm. if you don't if you're not comfortable with that you just leave and then we'll see you on the next cruise so most of the staff they are aware that 
uh, this cruise is a gay cruise. So they know what they should do. So that uh, when you wear very sexy G-string, uh, tongue, jockstrap, all this thing of super, super sexy thing around the cruise, they will still just like, mm, okay, mm, yeah, so please put on your clothes. Yeah, so just make sure that you respect the local culture when you are on that. So I, uh, you saw some of the video that some of them are almost naked. So it's just like uh, in a comfortable place, you are allowed to be naked. So just do it where you can. Like uh, try to put on clothes when you go to the restaurant or the buffet area. But I always in a swim trunk in the buffet area. But in the proper uh, a la carte restaurant, I will still put on my clothes. So on that note, um, is there like any street dress code at certain areas of the cruise liner, like during the whole event? So usually uh, there will be a different deck. We call it different level, but we call it deck. Uh, from the deck to the pool area, there'll be a special, I mean, there'll be a staircase. You can go all the way up to the pool area. So usually those pe uh, people will just like, wear the very sexy outfit to the pool. But uh, they will not recommend you to wear too sexy at the public area, like the, the shopping area, the restaurant, the reception, the, 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 the public area, except swimming pool and the buffet area. They will just be very sexy at the pool area <coughs> and go all the way to the pool area from the staircases or the lift. Mm -hmm. mm. And <coughs> there are something we call D-deck. It will be very busy at night, you know what I mean, D-deck. <laughs> then uh, it's where people basically just lay there naked. Mm. So you cannot like, say that. <laughs> you have to say in a different way. So it's like it's where um, so D deck probably from what I gather is probably where people just socialize. In mm. their bare skin. <laughs> Even those that that area like for CCTV, uh, people just do it. But because the cruise liner is just solely oh. dedicated to Atlantis event, wow. Yeah. So it's it's a I mean it, there is this understanding that you know they need to segregate this space for that particular activity to take place. Like. Yeah, so the D deck will be busy during on the sea day or every evening. Yeah, I mean, I will figure lah because it's, after all, after all, it's that, it's, a, it's this particular event, so definitely there's a, there's a, if there's a demand, there's a supply lah. But when you on a gay cruise, it's actually very busy, super busy. Um, my very first gay cruise is on a uh, Asia cruise, which is like those destination I already been there, so I skip all the uh shore activity. But my previous cruise at Aten to Barcelona, that every stop that I really want to go down on uh, on shore, beautiful places. Then, uh, the cruise will be almost half empty. The ship will be almost half empty. So. For those that they will not want to leave the cruise, they'll be busy on their thing or they will rest. Yeah. But for me, it's like, uh, it's every day that you have pack, pack, pack lots of activity. Uh, morning breakfast, you'll be mingling around with the people, you're making, you're making a lot of new friends. Then at, at, at the after, after breakfast, you, ha you have to start to prepare yourself to leave the ship and then like, go to the excursion. Then uh, when you come back, there'll be another party, dance party, team party, then there'll be like a drag show, singing show, all kind of show for you. There are even some sexy shows. Yeah, so um so so there is like different port of calls. Yes. Where you can actually alight and then for a certain duration of time, Correct. you can go out and tour the city. So it's not just about the activities on board, Correct. but you can also like go and explore the cities that the crews actually um 
uh, stop that lah. Yeah, Sean know about then, all this thing because I keep showing him all the Instagram story and yeah. I, when I edit video, I will show you that. Oh, look at this uh, place in Santorini. I was like, uh, in Malta, it's so beautiful. So, yeah, so uh, I will still strongly recommend that those you are not really into gay thing, but if you are gay, you still can take the cruise. Uh, like me, I'm not into party. I am still really enjoy of all the stop that they actually stop by. I think you can just mm. think of it as a safe space for you to kind of do your networking and know more people of the same kind from different countries and different walks of life. Yeah. And from there, you build up a community, so to speak. Lah. But then having said that, I know that uh, from his... Um, account that there are people who actually uh, left midway that means the crew stopped at a certain part of call and then they just packed their luggage and then they left because one um, there's there's several reasons like one they quarrel with their partner two they do not have the legitimate visa to actually uh, proceed on to the next port of call so maybe Jim can elaborate more on that so uh, it seems like it's real. So in Asia cruise, it's really are uh, not allowed to enter Malaysia. So Singapore to Bangkok stop two places in Malaysia. It's very sad that the Israeli cannot explore beautiful of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur and uh, Langkawi. Mm. Uh, so some of the people they have not done their visa advance or the cruise line because some of the cruise company they, uh, they will help you to uh, apply the visa with a slightly pricier price then if you can do it your own maybe it should be easier it, uh, some, uh, some of the cruise liners they will not allow you to do that by yourself so it's quite it's, uh, tricky part with that so make sure that you know where you stop and it's very funny thing that when uh a lot of people they have no idea where they actually stop by. A lot of them they focus on the party. Huh? Yes. They so, buy the I mean they book the package and then they don't know where yes. they are stopping. So uh it, it happened to me that uh, a lot of people they will stop by at Sicily, they have no that Jim, what is special in Sicily? Oh my god, the seafood here is so good. Jim, what is uh, special about the uh, uh, Naples? Like, oh, the pizza is good. You have to go to the the, the Pompeii Pompeii is amazing They have never done their work So if you've done your work Then you can look for someone To join you To explore the area together With the taxi Or share the car rental All these things That's what I did Or you can plan everything together Then you make new friends Yeah. Mm. So that is a very important thing that How about the quarreling part? Huh? What? The partners quarreling with each other and left the So, although it's a ship that yeah, about 2,000 people, um, when some couple, they argue, uh, there's a group chat. It's very important that you have to join the group chat when uh, you go board the ship. Everyone know about those couple, they are quarreling. <laughs> but not, not, maybe not everyone. It's just like certain people, then we, they are very up to date. Then they'll know that, oh, tomorrow, this, this is hero pack all the bag and leave the crew <laughs> and uh, I literally saw two of the couple they left the sh ship which is quite sad is he is the only one to drag the luggage out from the ship it's very sad and there's also there's one guy he did not bring make the visa to Thailand and then he had to live in Vietnam <sighs> which is very very sad and then uh, I remember there's the one guy that he blamed at Antis at not telling him about the visa, uh, no one helping him at the port in some country. The port can be very, very countryside. There's no taxi or whatever. He was left or on the port until 12 midnight that no one picked him up, which is quite sad. Um, but that, to be fair, that uh, Atlantis might have tell you about what you should know but I think as a traveller that two of us I think we will do our homework I think to make it very fair for everybody you paid for the package you should know what you are paying for and yeah. where you are going yeah. and you should uh, take the responsibility to make sure that yeah, your visa or wherever you are going you will have legitimate stay yeah. like. you, so, don't, you don't have to you don't go away thinking that you know the cruise, do yeah the organizing 
um, party will actually take care of everything for mm-hmm. you because mm-hmm. that is your responsibility. But as what I know that Atlantis Cruise is try their best to help them, but actually this supposed to be the cruise liner company to help the passengers. But to I think, arrange this because I, like he was pl- he was like texting a lot of sad thing, posting a lot of photo of him alone at the port midnight that nobody will help him all this thing. Is, but I think I uh, think whether if it is just the organizing company which is Atlantis or the cruise liner operator, mm-hmm. it is also your own um, responsibility. responsibility. You know, you know your own nationality and you know where you can go and where you cannot go without yeah. proper visa yeah. requirements yeah. fulfilled. So you need to also exercise your own discretion yeah. uh, and not be not be very whiny and start blaming everybody. But at first I really stand on his sides, but after I discussed with some of the fellow cruisers and we all agreed that uh you should have your own responsibility yeah. to make sure that your entire trip is safe and uh yeah uh, suitable for yourself. Yeah, you are an adult, you and you know you know what are some of I mean as a as someone who travels, you should know what are the expectations of you as a tourist when you go to certain countries. Mm. So you cannot just assume that you can go to every country just because you have a passport. No, I don't think it yeah. works that way. So I think in a nutshell, to ensure that you have like a, an enjoyable experience, whether if it's like cruise or whether if it's like just flying overseas Mm -hmm. you should always do your homework (laughs) it's just like my brother and my uh, sister-in-law they book a trip to Taiwan and now like my sister-in-law need a visa to uh, Taiwan my brother we are Malaysian we can fly into Taiwan visa free my brother did not expect that that, uh, as an Indonesian need a visa to Taiwan and I know like uh, my sister-in-law had never been into Taiwan yeah so I think in general I think it's quite important it's your own responsibility yeah 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 you cannot you cannot just because you make a boo-boo and then you start to push the blame to other people I think it's not very fair also Mm. but I think in general the whole um, from what Jim has experienced and shared the whole um, experience with Atlantis uh, is ra- a rather eye-opening one, I would say. And um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, uh, it is something for people to really consider experiencing as a once-in-a-lifetime kind of experience. Lah. And uh, I myself would like to also, you know, if given a chance to also go you and go see. Because, <laughs> because I think, you know, when you are alive, you are just, your, your sole responsibility is really just to experience life and what life has to offer. And, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think it's, it's totally, I feel that it's totally okay to to be very open about it and then to to really go out there and explore and understand a little bit more even for like straight cruisers i think it's also a very good experience it's a very good experience as well like in in european countries fly cruises are actually very common it's a real thing where people actually fly to a certain destination Mm -hmm. and then they brought bought a cruise ship and then they go to various port of course and then they disembark and explore the cities and go back on to the cruise so it's it's actually a lifestyle for them lah. so so it's okay i think the people will get bored to listen to all this thing they wanted to know what actually they can but we cannot share too much later we'll be yellow flagged again i don't know we can try ask me the question i can try to answer it's you it's already the... like more than half an hour oh okay yeah so you um you can actually type your questions in the comment section below and then we'll have a second edition of this particular podcast because we don't exactly know what he... no we we 
as in the viewers don't ah. don't exactly know what to expect and there might be some burning questions which we may not be able to cover. But also that there are lots of questions I'm not allowed to answer public on uh, YouTube. But you can text and then we can see, we can screen through the questions and then we can see how best we can to... You know, there's some question that YouTube actually will censor it. Like I can't even, I can see the notification, but I can't see, I can't reply them at all. Then you yeah. need to, viewers, you need to be very creative in asking the questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to end now? Okay. So uh, the next video of podcast about, I think, will be next year that when Sean bought his very first cruise. No, nah, not, so, not so far away, I guess. I, uh, I think the next one will be, if you all know how to ans ask questions creatively, we can create another podcast discussion to talk about for Jim to share his experiences mm. in more details. Mm. Because I think um, some of the videos that you already see would have so, already yeah. give you a glimpse into how the experience is like. La. But mm. then um, if you really want to know more details, you can actually pop the questions in the comment section below and then we can actually see how we can creatively answer some of the questions that you have. Okay, before we end the video, we are actually in the bathtub of Sofitel Singapore City Centre. And I can uh, recognize this uh, aroma is uh, L'Occitane Lavender. Yellow. <laughs> so uh, they actually provide free bubble yeah, bath. Uh, they, they will help the housekeeping staff will come and help you prepare the hot bubble bath for you. Mm -hmm. And also you can have like a pillow menu from mm -hmm. which you can choose the suitable pillow for yourself for a good night's rest. And this is a very LGBT hotel. Not, I, I will not say that LGBT friendly, no, but no. a lot of LGBT. It's just that yeah. the environment is very conducive yeah. for people because yeah. um, it's right smack in town yeah. and it's very near to all the gay, gay clubs. Yeah or the what we call the LGBTQIA plus clubs and it's a very safe place to be in. Yeah. yeah. So and, and sometimes they also host some uh, LGBT friendly. Okay, I'll let him end this. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so in general it's quite quite a comfortable place to be in. Uh, and then the room is actually very comfortable as well. Mm. Yeah, so with that, uh, we look forward to the questions that you might have for Jim, which we can share in our next podcast, and we will see you when we see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.